There you go. Please join me in welcoming Matt Newsom. Come on up here, Matt. What John didn't say is that between us, we've run 46 marathons together. Actually, he's run 45 and I've run one, but it sounds better the other way. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here with you this weekend. There was a great article in Sports Illustrated recently commemorating the supposed 2500th anniversary of the first marathon in ancient Greece. It starts out with the historical context of Pheidippides running 25 miles from Marathon to Athens to report victory over the Persians. When he got there, he cried out, we have won. And then he collapsed and died. But here's where the accounts differ, because we don't know if he ran out of goo or if his coaches didn't put out enough water stops. <laughs> but then the article transitions into current day marathons and why crazy people like us run them. Reasons like getting in shape, remembering the death of a loved one, celebrating the lives of others, making new friends, losing weight, crossing something off a bucket list, raising money for a great cause and celebrating their own lives. I know that all of these reasons and many others are represented in this room tonight. The teaming training program is truly amazing that it enables all of these wonderful motivations. As for me, I'm running in memory of my mother-in-law who died of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma 13 years ago. She was a patient at UNC's Lineberger Cancer Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, which is supported by LLS, and she was a great lady. I'm running in honor of my Charlotte teammates, Linda and Scott, who are here tonight, and Doug and Randy back home, all of whom are blood cancer survivors. They've shared their own journeys and are wonderful inspirations to our team. I'm running to raise money to cure all blood cancers and improve the lives of patients and their families like my Aunt Ann in Columbus, Ohio, and my Aunt Ann's roommate Thomas from Oklahoma City. And I'm running to celebrate my own journey. It's been just over three years, it was January of 2009, since I last donated blood. I'd always been a big blood donor, and the Red Cross and I lost count, somewhere between 250 and 300 units of, of blood and platelets that I had donated over the years. I tried to donate blood again in June of 2009, but was deferred because my red count was too low. No big deal, the technician said. The test could have been bad, or I could just be having a bad day, but I made a mental note to try to donate again real soon, and I, I did about a month later on a Saturday and got the same result. I knew something couldn't be right, and I, I called my doctor Monday morning and was in to see him Monday afternoon. He ordered blood work and said he'd call me with the results. But after I checked out and was, was headed out to my car, the nurse came running after me and said, Mr. Newsom, the doctor needs to see you. It's never good when your doctor says, come in my office, let me close the door, sit down, we need to talk. He told me that he was really concerned and ordered an immediate CBC and that all of my blood counts, red, white, and platelet, were off the charts low. He had already made an appointment for me to, with an oncologist for the next morning. That night I did what everybody who wants to get 100% factual information on a vitally important subject would do. I went to Wikipedia. <laughs> because if it's on Wikipedia, it must be true. Actually, I found the LLS website very quickly, and it provided a wealth of great information. Of course, the possibilities ran the gamut, and I tried not to get too worked up, and I didn't sleep real well that night. The next day, the oncologist ran some tests, and I had my first bone marrow biopsy, given the choice, I think I'd rather run a marathon. He called me the following day with a diagnosis of hairy cell leukemia. My case was right out of the textbook, cut and dried. I went from trying to be a blood donor to being a blood cancer patient in four days. According to the LLS website, hairy cell leukemia is a slow-growing form of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. The disease is diagnosed in an estimated 500 to 800 cases in the U.S. each year. It's called hairy cell leukemia because the leukemic lymphocytes have short, thin projections on their surfaces that look like hairs when examined under a microscope. Hairy cells accumulate in the blood marrow and prevent the marrow from producing enough normal blood cells. HCL typically hits white males between the ages of 40 and 60 and its causes are not known. HCL was first identified in 1958 and quite frankly, there were no satisfactory treatments until uh, the 1980s when in 1984, pentostatin was found to be effective in 75% of patients. In 1990, cladribine was established as the most effective treatment with a 95% remission rate. 
for an average of 10 years, and it's repeatable in the event of a relapse. Since I'm on the younger end of that age range, seriously, <laughs> and my hairy cell counts were extremely high, we were looking for a knockout punch, so I entered a clinical trial at National Institutes of Health, NIH in Bethesda, Maryland. And this trial combines cladribine with rituxan, a drug commonly used in the treatment of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. The research into the varied uses of rituxan has been heavily supported by LLS. I was the third person in the trial and began eight weeks of treatment in late August of 2009. The great news is that I was in remission at 30 days, a pleasant surprise that had all of us doing cartwheels. The best, news, the best news is that of the 18 people now in my part of the trial, all 18 are in remission, 100%. In fact, our doctor at NIH is pushing to have our treatment become the new protocol for HCL. I mentioned the evolution of the treatments in detail because I think it's very important to highlight the tremendous strides we've made in the treatment of blood cancers. For example, in 28 years, we have gone from no satisfactory treatment to a 100% remission rate. LLS deserves a tremendous amount of credit for supporting research in these life-saving areas, and that's something each and every one of you should take great pride in. So this month, a family friend in Florida who was training for the, uh, with TNT for the nation's triathlon contacted me to ask if she could use my story in her fundraising. And I was flattered and humbled and deeply touched. As I learned more about TNT, I called the Charlotte office in North Carolina to see how I could get involved. I was invited to speak at the Falls kickoff in Charlotte for the Kiowa South Carolina Marathon that would be held in December of 2009. I, I was honored to be able to share my story with people who are about to embark on this tremendous journey of training for a long distance event. But very quickly I became amazed at what they could, that they could be so dedicated to a cause that meant so much uh, personally to me. They were committed to running and raising money through TNT for blood cancer patients just like me. That really impressed me and I knew I had to do something to be a part of that commitment so I signed up on the spot. I bounced out of that room, was halfway home, all fired up, and looked in the rearview mirror and said, Matt, what the heck did you just do? <laughs> because I'll tell you, I was not much of a runner. I ran a 10K when I was 17, year old, 17 years old on a dare, and I ran another one at age 34 on a bet. I was not scheduled to run again until I was 51 years old. <laughs> that first Saturday, we met at 6.30 in the morning to run three miles, and I gotta tell you, I was scared to death. I didn't know if I could do it. But with the help of my teammates, I did it, and the next week we ran four, and the next week we ran five, and our team runs quickly became one of the highlights of my week. Four months after that kickoff meeting, with the help of my teammates and coaches, I ran the Kilo Marathon in four hours and 48 minutes. Truly one of the, <laughs> truly one of the greatest accomplishments of my life. And I've kept on running this. Tomorrow will be my ninth half marathon in the last year and a half to go along with that full. It's, it's almost been like an out-of-body experience. Quite frankly, I have no idea who is this person I've become. Some of my friends have dared to call me a runner, but I am quick to correct them. I am not a runner. With apologies to the Penguin, I'm a long-distance endurance athlete. During my journey, I've met a lot of amazing people. I've met really smart and caring doctors and researchers, researchers who are working hard to develop better treatments and cures, many of whom are supported by you and LLS. I've met wonderfully compassionate nurses and technicians who see it as a true calling to help cancer patients. I've met other blood cancer patients who are far sicker than I, yet they have amazing outlooks on life. And I've met an inspiring group of people who meet on Tuesdays and Saturdays and run together my teammates supported by our coaches, mentors, and TNT staffers. Today there are 1,012,533 people in the U.S. living with a blood cancer. But as the TNT website says, together we train to beat cancer. Together we train to beat cancer. I'll speak for my fellow patients and say thank you. You've given us the strength and power to persevere. So tomorrow's race day, and whether you're running your first half marathon or your seasoned marathon veteran, it's going to be a great challenge. Just remember, you've got the energy of 1,012,530 people, plus Linda, Scott, and me running with you.
Let us give you the strength and the power to persevere. I'll see you at the finish line. Good luck. Go team.